me again with Corel Draw Tips and Tricks. And this is going to be a sh little short video, I hope, on taking a piece of clip art. And this is kind of a re repetitive video, but I just did it this morning for a friend of mine that wanted this uh, for something. It's the Dark Knight logo for Batman. So I brought in a, a piece of clip art and probably the best one I could find, but as you can see, it's uh, really pixelized. So all you have to do is click on the item, go to bitmap, convert it to a bitmap, black and white, press OK, and it's changed it to a bitmap. Go back up to bitmap, go to outline trace, clip art, because it is a piece of clip art. It's going to ask you to reduce it in size. Takes just a few seconds. So now it's done. Your new trace one is always going to be on top. So just go over and, and right click your mouse to a, uh, get your outline. And as you can see, it's already a lot cleaner. But, and this might even work for a laser table, but this would not work for a plasma table because these there's way too many nodes. So what we're going to do, we're going to click on the item. We're going to go up to the shape tool and you can see all the nodes. It's terrible. If you were doing this on a plasma cutter, uh, you'd have a bunch of jagged edges. So what you need to do is lasso it all, go up to reduce nodes, and let's just go to 20%. And I don't really know if that's a percentage, but 20. And look what it's already done. It's already reduced the nodes to just 18 nodes. Let's see how many I had before. Let's back up here. It had 262 nodes. So same thing just lasso it reduce it to 20 you can play around with that now as you can see it's not symmetrical there's a node not in the middle there's these two nodes are different than these two nodes so if you would work on this for a little while to get both sides symmetrical it would take you a while so let's do here's one I've there's the same one but here's what I've done there's the one that's symmetrical. So let's just erase this one because I don't need it anymore. So I've, I've made my one I'm going to work on with a black hairline. I'm going to press P on the keyboard and I'm going to put it in the center of the page. I'm going to grab the original. I'm going to put it in the center of the page. Now we're only going to focus on half of the bat. So go up to your shape tool. Well... I need to reduce these nodes first. I thought I'd already done that. Let's reduce them to 20. Put it in the center of the page. And now you can see a lot less nodes. Now, we're going to want to take away, well, let's just do this. Let's Before we put it on top, Let's reduce some of these nodes. So just go up to your shape tool, lasso those, erase them, maybe erase that one, uh, maybe erase this one. And as you can see, I'm only working on half. And let's put this node on the corner, more so. Now, let's put P and put it in the center. And you can see we've changed it quite a bit, so that's not going to work. But go back here and let's put that note on this corner. Now, it's going to be a lot easier if right now you change all these to a cusp. And I'll show you why. A cusp is going to allow you to move one of the handles and not both the handles. See, as you can see, I'm changing the one that's going up and down, but I'm not changing this side. If it, if it was a smooth part, it would be changing both sides. If 
go here. And this is something you just have to kind of play with. I really want that note on top. And we might have to put that a node back in there to get both sides. So just double click it and you've got another node. And then you can play with it. And because it's a cusp, you're only deal dealing with one side at a time. As you can see. So I've got it pretty close. Now the reason, and you know, this goes in and out and left and right. So you can kind of get it right on the line. Now, with that said, let's say that's good enough. I would tweak a little bit more. Uh, I actually, you know, the, the black line is probably better than the other line. Let's tweak this a little bit. Get it more of the original shape. Maybe make that a little taller. You know, especially if you're plasma cutting, you don't want those ears to be so sharp or they'll just burn away. But this is going to help you with your uh, design. All right, let's say that's good enough. Now, you can see how the left and the right side are totally different. Let's just move this one out of the way for a second. Let's grab that one, press P on the keyboard, take, go over to a two point line, hold down your control button and it's going to draw the line straight up and down. Press P on your keyboard and it's in the center. Take your virtual segment delete key and just delete this side. You can actually delete this. Well, I wouldn't delete that line quite yet. So now you've got this. Go up here and make a mirror image of it. Whoop, I didn't make a copy of it. Alright, control D. Make a mirror image of it. Now if you'll hold down your control button, I've got my nudge factor set on 0 .001. If you hold down your control button, I'm actually moving the wrong one. So back up. Hold down your control button and it's not going to let you move it up and down it's just left to right. We're pretty close. Now you can zoom in right here and just move. Now you can move it with your nudge factor at 0.001. Now, now you can take away this line. Lasso it all. Weld it together. Let's take away this one. And now you've got a bat that's symmetrical on both sides. And it looks pretty good. It, it's got good, clean, sharp vector lines. I do that a lot by cutting things in half that you want symmetrical and working on one half a lot because you're never going to get them symmetrical. I don't care how much time you take. But if you cut them in half, rotate it, flip it around, it'll save you a lot of time. Hope that helped a little bit. And thank you for watching.